Hello, beautiful souls. It is the beginning of December and I am going to do a December, December energy oracle reading forecast. So this is for the collective energy that I tap into. And I just wanted to say a couple of things real quick. Number one, most people that get readings from me use the information that comes from the reading because it comes from the energy signature. So you're bypassing the ego to help guide them in their shadow work journey. Because this is tapping into things that your brain may not have let you realize is for you. So if something really resonates with the reading, I want you to sit with it. I want you to ask for clarity and go into meditation, whether that be a walk in nature or sitting lotus style in meditation and see what comes. If you're questioning whether this is for you, um, find a friend, ask them, is this in my highest and best good to have our Oracle reading done with Lucy? And it is a really good tool. Okay. Not everything that comes through is hundred percent accurate, but we have lots and lots of testimony of people that do get these readings. They help that guide their Ascension journey because it helps target their shadow work. And Part of this is that I'm checking on your chakras too. And so when you're processing things for the collective or when you're processing your shadow work, your chakras are involved. Right now, we are doing chakra flushes on the planet four or five times a day. She is processing so much of the collective energy and so much of the integration of her ascension energy, the changes in um, the actual DNA blueprint of all beings that are alive. All these things are being processed. Our ground crew is processing a ton. We're also doing four or five, six times a day chakra flushes. So you definitely want to take care of your chakras. If you need anything, stop by violetlotusenergy.com. Sign up for your QET. We can help you maintain that energy so that you are clear and can receive your messages clearly. So let me get set up for December's energy forecast reading. and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I have cleared everything. We have saged everything. The decks for this month's reading are the Lightworker Oracle by Elena Fairchild, Angels of Abundance. This is Doreen Virtue and Grant Virtue, Soul Truth, Self Awareness by Brianne Covey. And Angels and Ancestors by Kyle Gray. Let's get started with the Lightworker Oracle deck. Confirm that I am clear of all negative entities, negative implants, curses, hexes, and spells, hooks, daggers, and bindings. That I have permission to do Oracle card readings today for the collective as well as personal readings. And I am grateful to the universe. Okay, remove all negative energy from this deck. I call in the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia. What in this now moment is in the highest and best good for the collective to hear going forward 30 days, the month of December, 2024, highest and best good messages for the collective. Is this for the collective? 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 Is this is your first time checking out my readings? My I use my pendulum to confirm I'm getting the correct card for the reading. Circles are yeses and back and forth is no. My elbow is anchored, my hand's not moving. And then sometimes I get messages that are, um, from the divine that come in during a reading. I'll do that too as well. It's just whatever the energy takes us to. Reassurance of the golden light is the first card. Reassurance of the golden light. This is reaffirming faith. Faith over fear. Faith over low vibrational doubts and feelings like shame, blame, pain, frustration, guilt. Things that our culture is really good about laying on us and we have to like dig up and out of these low vibrational things to reconnect to our faith. So if you have been questioning, if you've been doubting, if you've been resisting, 
your spiritual growth or you feel maybe a little distant from source creator mother sophia this is a time to reassure your connection to the golden light pure source golden light and the flow of energy through you that does bring clarity that does align you to your path it is always available to you it is a matter of us accepting that guidance in the pink rose of lady nada Lady Nada's energy is the same uh, oversoul, same soul being as Maggie, Magdalene. The pink roses and Lady Nada has, has actually come to several of us recently with activations that really bring forth how love is the key and compassion opens the door, right? So when you don't know where to begin, you want to begin with love for yourself. You want to make, you may have to heal yourself with self-love, self-healing, self-compassion to get yourself to the point where you can actually give love to something and, and someone else. So it doesn't just come naturally for some people, especially those that have been wounded and they have to come through trauma. They have to learn to love themselves again, and then they can spread that love out like a rainbow. It does begin in one and move over to the other and the love is fueled by your internal flame that pink flame of the mother and so whether you are a mother or not you have a mother and is it your soul mother maybe is it your earthly mother maybe maybe they're one and the same we choose our families to provide us with learning opportunities so that our soul can grow and evolve and we make it back to our soul family that's the trajectory of our incarnations over and over and over and over again. Balance in all things. You see how the flowers are balanced. They're different colors, pink, purple, lavenders, blues, gold, but they're balanced. And in the middle is a pink rose. Love is the key and compassion opens the door. Don't forget that that begins in your own heart. If you have not given yourself enough love and compassion to heal, what do you think you're going to offer someone else? You got to lead by example. Initiation by water. Initiation by water is inviting you to connect with messages, clarity, downloads, activations via water. That can be water in a salt bath. That can be water when you're doing the dishes. That can be water when you get caught outside in the rain. That can be uh, any type of water. It can be snow as a form of precipitation and you may then in that moment it's initiation by water where you come in contact with the water the water has memory the water has healing the water has energy and it all is channeled to you and through you for a purpose opening yourself up to what water actually brings to you as a very powerful element is important you may be a water and you may have not really tapped into what all that brings into your life. And you're being called to, to lean into that now. Master healing. Angel number 33. Master healing comes in a way we have had to pull away from what we were all taught healing looked like. And learn or relearn because this is things that are very, very old. They're not new. We're just remembering them now. That master healing comes from within. And that energy is what helps us maintain being in a state of being healed. And if you're serious about overcoming heart disease, diabetes, um, obesity, addiction, sugar cravings, um, trauma, PTSD, depression, any of these things, it can be accomplished with energy healing because we go to the source of the problem. We're not throwing prescriptions at it. We're not telling you how to eat, what to eat, and all those things. Those are natural byproducts when a being goes through the, uh, the energy work of shadow work and realizing what's in their highest and best good and aligning back to source. 
But in order to do that, you have to clear out your energy body. So I invite you to get a QET session to become clear in your energy fields so that all the congestion is moving. Then there is a flow instead of blockage after blockage after blockage. And you can see the flow of the of the energy coming up through and it leads to the cosmos because we are elements of the cosmos. We are of the stars and we are energy and the energy should flow through us, not become stuck in our matter, which causes us to have um, low vibrational labels such as high blood pressure, diabetes, um, hypercholesterol, um, all sorts of things. So we have to detach from what doesn't work for us, except that it doesn't work. Okay. It really just makes things worse and look for alternatives in energy to heal us because we are energy and that's where the source is. Moving on to angels and ancestors, remove all negative energy from this deck. I call in the angels, the archangels, the assistant, ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia, soul guides and emissaries. I'm asking for the collective energy signature, tapping into that. What is the collective message to bring forth December 2024? Highest and best good for the collective. Magic guardian, unlock the magic within. And magic, it to put it simply, it's just alchemical changes and transformations of energy. So there are good and bad and all, light and dark and all. We do practice magic technically because we transform energy from dark to light. We clear energy, we remove negative entities, negative cords and attachments, negative implants, all sorts of negative things so that what's left is aligned energy to the divine of the light energy. And so when you call on the magic guardian, you want to make sure that you are practicing and receiving benevolent energy and learning from the magic guardian how to navigate that because you have free will choice and your free will choice is always honored so if you are in your heart in your intention good benevolent and and you are just learning how to navigate this world you are aligned to the divine also a really bright light and you may or may not have the experience to um, defend from those energy vampires that see you from a very long distance away they understand that you have what they want. And so you really need to recognize energy in the people, places, and things around you as well. Be aware of who you're dealing with in your energy. I call it taking an energy inventory of your vortex. Who are you actively engaging energy with? You see, but consenting, consenting to engage your energy with these beings, do they have a soul? Are they of the light? Are they benevolent? Are they using something or someone else as a conduit to harm you? You should ask these questions. Earth guardian, stay rooted and grounded. Archangel Raphael. And the earth, as in the element of water, as in the the, the nature, the grounding, um, centering your energy to the planet. It helps you with clarity. It helps you with grounding. It helps you feel centered. It helps you feel guided. It helps the noise to settle down into the core of your being so you understand where you need to go. If you're feeling really pulled in several different directions, and that's kind of what I'm getting right now for the collective, that everyone's being pulled here, there, and yonder, but you're not enforcing your own healthy boundary to center yourself. It's 100% okay and expected of us that we take time to ground ourselves every day, that we take time to meditate every day. We take time in every day 
in one way or another that we give thanks and there's a positive energy exchange with the nature we ask mother nature we ask the planet Huna Matea to take in that negative energy from our earth star chakra and help to keep it clear and help to keep us grounded so that we don't feel anxious so that we don't feel nervous that we are purposeful in our actions so this is a good reminder to always go back to to source and go back to the planet for grounding your energy pillar before you set up on your day it helps to set you up for success which be the light so these two are definitely connected when you tap into your magic guardian your magic guardian already knows your intentions if you're ambiguous and you're not sure what you're doing you can easily get roped into dark magic because it's more prevalent and I tell you this as an example, years ago, I suspected that I had curses against me and I Googled, well, she did a search on YouTube, how to remove curses. And I didn't find anything on how to remove them, but I saw hundreds of videos of how to deliver cur curses. And these were, ben these were not benevolent curses. These were male malevolent curses. These are manipulative curses. So there's a lot of people out there just statistically speaking, that are dipping into the dark side of magic. So you want to ask your magic guardian to keep you in the light, to keep that clarity there. And whenever you are understanding that we are witches, but there are good witches, light witches, and dark witches, and we are not all the same. Yes, we're all alchemical practitioners. Some of us are are put here to heal and to be master healers to transform all that negative energy dark to light some are here to do harm and that is not what we are here for we are here to be the light to tap into the wisdom of our higher self and all the the culmination of the wisdom that our higher self possesses and we use that to help transform energy this butterfly is representative of transformational energy where we take the dark and we turn it to light. Medicine mother, honor your inner knowing. Medicine mother is another act as far as this entire spread, magic guardian, earth guardian, and witch be the light where you honor your, your guidance to perform with a shaman that has very good experiences that is of the light, a medicine where you tap in and you you bypass the locks, the breaks, and the blockages of energies of past lives that have got you stuck. And you are able to then unfold the flower, the lotus flower within. This is a medicine mother where we are healing through energy. We also heal through the elements, right? We are alchemical practitioners of the elements, initiation by water initiation by fire earth earth guardian when you're in plant medicine journeys you're partaking of the earth elements and it allows you a sense of freedom and a sense of healing that cannot be obtained any other way this is a strong push of the collective to go back to what has worked for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years and that is herbal medicine energy medicine, natural medicine, homeopathic medicine, no prescriptions involved, no surgeries involved. Going back to what has worked for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Then what we have been participating in, modern Western healthcare pales in comparison because they don't have the track record that, that the natural medications do, which is your medicine plants, your um, your teas and tinctures, understanding how being in nature with the bees, the honey, the pollen, the grasses, grounding, water, energy, all of it works together so that we are our, our optimally best energy body. That's what we are, we're energy. Now we will go with, this is Angels of Abundance. Remove all negative energy from this deck. What is the highest and best good collective December 2024? 
as the golden age of miracles is upon us. What is this golden abundance message for the collective? Before I forget, soul brother Tony, does, he's a shaman and he does medicine, medicine journey retreats, usually somewhere around Sedona, also in California, different places like that. Um, I did a video with him not too long ago. It's on my channel. Tap into that. His link tree is there. If you're looking for a medicine journey, definitely check him out. Bountiful nature. This is absolutely a predominant message theme in this reading. Spending time in nature helps shift you to higher vibration and reminds you of God's infinite abundance. Go outside, enjoy a walk or a hike with your pet, meditate, breathe in beneath a tree, garden, sit under the stars, do some other activity to connect with the limitless vastness of nature. So we have a big push here. We have a big push to reconnect with which is readily available to you outside. Now, if you live in a city, a metropolitan area, there's always green spaces. Make your way to one. Get yourself off in a little, a little secluded area where you can take your shoes off, put your feet on the ground, and be. Just be. Turn the phone off. Maybe play high hertz music. But don't be scrolling through Instagram or any of that stuff. Just be and allow the nature and the energy to come to you. That is the flow of things. And it is definitely predominant in this reading right now, where that is telling me that the energy signature of the collective is craving what nature can provide, but they're ignoring what nature is there to do. Obstacles and blocks are lifted. Hallelujah. All your good personal, your positive energy shift to come previous obstacles and blocks are lifted away. You will now experience progress and forward mo movement with your projects. Stay centered in gratitude to ensure that your flow of abundance continues. And this is in alignment with Golden Age of Miracles. This is in alignment with Age of Aquarius. This is in alignment with all of the shifts that have taken place, planetary, um, astrological, energy, everything. This is an alignment that these blocks have been removed. These old contracts that no longer serve us have been removed. And the flow of abundance is coming to us. We have to do our part and not disempower ourselves with our words, not already count us out of any type of abundance because we think we're not worthy. So you have to know that you're, what your worth is. Pay yourself first. Make yourself your most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you're paid. The loving form of self-care ensures that you'll have savings to invest in your present and your future. And that is, again, reminding you that you have to self-love, have self-healing, self-compassion, and this is paying yourself first. It's a very, very hard concept for empaths. It's really hard. We just want to help everyone else to the detriment of our own self, right? I will give my last penny away to my children if they say they need something and I will go without, right? That seems to be what we're told to do with us, but is it really in your highest and best good? If you give every single bit of energy you have away, you give all your love away, you don't have any left for you. In fact, so much so that you don't even know who you are. Is that in your highest and best good? I don't think so. We have to really shift. When the planet shifts, the energy shifts, we have to shift our way of thinking and behaving as well. Otherwise, there's a frequency mismatch there. We have to get in alignment with the shifts in the way that they're headed so that we flow with it and we ourselves do not become an, an obstacle. Words of abundance. Again, power of words. You have the ability to instantly manifest abundance by choosing powerfully positive words. Always describe your own and the world's economic situation in a loving and optimistic terms. 
and that is what you attract to yourself and others. When you use power and, and positive frequency words, you're reaffirming your worth. And even though you're yourself are doubtful, you have to start somewhere. This is what affirmations do. So when you are reminding yourself that you're worthy and that you know your worth and that you have not been paid your worth yet, but you expect it because you deserve it. This is what you send out to the universe. So your energy is attached to that and the universe will deliver it to you multiplied. And what do you have to lose, right? What do you really truly have to lose? If you put just one aspect of this reading into place for December and see how it affects your life, that what at the end of December could you quantify as a change because of one aspect here that is coming forth from your energy? This is tapping into your energy. The energy of the collective is determining what's coming through this reading. And it is very clear, a return to nature and a shift of energy and understanding that these things help open up the flow of abundance. Beautiful. The last deck is soul truth. I absolutely love this deck. It has a lot of wisdom, a lot of wisdom. Highest and best good for the collective. What is the soul truth messages that need to come forth in this now moment for the December energy forecast? Okay. Am I consistently showing up? Are you experiencing a mountain of fear right now? Are you stalling, freezing, or giving up? The juicy secret is that you are the boss of fear. You are unstoppable, but it's up to you to see that by taking action. Today's sole action is be brave and do it scared. Choose one fear and move through it. You are in need of a hero. So that is, you will become, you will become your own hero. There are so many of us that show up for others before they show up for themselves because they don't know where to begin. Again, like I said before, if you don't know where to begin, you begin with reaffirming your love for yourself. If you have fallen out of love with yourself, if you, there are things that you truly do not like about yourself, then that is where your shadow work is. And that's where you have to begin because you have to be full and whole. Draw back the energy of the lost pieces of your soul. Pull those pieces back together. You do that by doing your shadow work. When you show up for yourself, that means that you are enforcing healthy boundaries. You are eating an alignment to source creator, Mother Sophia's guidance. You are honoring nature you're honoring life you're honoring your energy self-love self-compassion self-healing you can then show up on a much bigger presence for yourself and anyone else how can i surrender even more in this moment it is essential to have clear strong intentions of what we desire but it's equally important for us to detach from the outcome it's time to surrender and let the universe have some breathing room to work. Let go of the wheel and try so deeply that your trust turns into gratitude for what you cannot see yet, but you know is coming. I'm on a pause here. There's more to read. This is a chronic problem in the collective because we're a bunch of control freaks. We've been taught that if we control and plan and schedule and micromanage, then everything will be perfect. Number one, nothing is perfect. And we don't ask for perfection. We ask for progress. Number two, when you schedule and micromanage the universe, the universe is going to let you know really quickly, you don't need me. You're not ready for me. You're not ready for the magic of the universe because there is no empty spaces on your schedule for me to work magic. 
So if you truly, truly want to get blessings, want to receive what the universe has in store for you, let go of the white knuckle grip of control that you falsely believe you have over yourself and life and go with the flow. And that means that you do the work to actually not exercise some form of control over every aspect of your life. And you allow things to flow to you and you allow things to drop away from you. That's the beauty. Karmic relationships, karmic people, places, and things that were meant to be in your life for a moment to teach you a lesson, but you've been holding on to them because you are deathly afraid of change. You let go of that control and the pieces of the puzzle fall into place. And some things that are not in your highest and best good will fall away from you. You will allow that to happen and see that the universe res does reward you with abundance because you letting go of the control and you're asking the universe to deliver to you what is in your highest and best good. How can I infuse more self-love and compassion into my daily life? Yes. Yes. Is your compassion, I'm sorry, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. Buddha. Today's soul action is choose one self-care action to do today. So this is a list of 10. This is 10 action items that can spread out over 10 days that can really, truly help you um, tune back into your, yourself. Do not listen to beings that tell you you're being selfish. They want you to give your time away to them and nothing to yourself. Understand the motive behind that message. Today's soul action, set stronger boundaries, meditate and listen to your heart, speak to yourself with compassion, focus on your strengths, say no to something that isn't a soul yes, say yes to something that you are afraid of, let go you cannot control, stay far away from drama and negativity, ask for help and allow it. Oh my gosh, that's huge. And write down three things that you're grateful for. This is the list. This is the list. Like take a screenshot. I want you all to work on this today, this month. These are the things that can make such a stark difference in your life. If you're afraid of change, that's the first place you start because you're just afraid that things may not look the way they look now. But in reality, let's flip that. If things don't look like they look now, but they look better and they feel better, isn't that a wonderful payoff for change? Let go of the control. We can all learn and evolve from one another and from allowing more energy to come into our, our vortex. So you want to let the things that have been derailing you and causing you pain and frustration and anger and trauma, let them go. Let them go. They're not meant for you. I don't care what label have has been assigned to them. I don't care if they have the label of brother, husband, partner, daughter, neighbor, whatever it is, boss, let go of the label and recognize the energy. Is that energy making your soul say, yes, this is for me or no, this is not for me. When you have that answer, cause you know what it is, you know, it honor it. That's your free will choice. You have to honor it. You know why? Because source creator also has to honor it. It's absolutely free will choice is always honored. Last card. What am I looking for outside of myself that is already within me? Are you looking for more guidance, confidence, peace, wisdom, love, or something else? When we search outside of ourselves, we can become overwhelmed, frustrated, and never feel quite good enough. It's time to go inward to find everything you seek. All your answers you need lie within you. Absolutely. Today's soul action, breathe in your favorite essential oil. Exhale deeply into your belly. Drop your shoulders and spend some time hanging out with your soul today. Ask for what you need and be ready for the answers. Allow the answers to come. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, when you first dip into these tasks, setting stronger boundaries. Let's just start there. When you start to exercise healthy boundaries, 
and the energy vampires and the manipulative people in your life that have always tried to exert pressure over you to have you do what makes them happy, they're going to push back on you. That means you got to, you have to be willing to enforce your healthy boundaries. Why? Because if you don't, no one else will. We don't control other people. So this is how it might go. You set a boundary of engaging with only to have a soul. That's a healthy boundary. People in your family that you were born into, lots of them don't have a soul. That means that in order to be with your family, the ones that do have a soul, you have to pick and choose on the different times and what you're going to do. Okay, then get creative because you can do a couple of things and join the big group and you can bubble the energy of those beings, but they're still going to talk to you and it's still going to get in your head. Or you can, instead of joining the big group, you can invite the ones that you want to spend time with, the ones that don't leave you with trauma, the ones that don't leave you with more shadow work to do and have that time with them. So that's redefining what a healthy boundary looks like and what that spending time together looks like. So you got to be really accepting of the guidance as it comes in. So when you tune into yourself and you ask for clarity, the universe is going to show you real quick that you don't need to spend, nor is it in your highest and best good to spend energy with beings that are sucking you dry of your energy. And then you have the free will choice to make a change or not. That's exactly what that looks like. And that is how people go about transforming their life from dark to light, from chaos to creativity, from mayhem to moving in a positive trajectory and alignment to source creator. So the overarching messages of this reading is getting back to nature, showing up for yourself, healing yourself, loving yourself, and using powerful words that have positive messages for you, disempowering words. Don't talk down to yourself. Don't talk down uh, about the beings in your vortex that are helping you to learn and grow. It might not be comfortable. You know why? Because that's when we grow. We grow with friction. We grow when it becomes uncomfortable. When you're so uncomfortable in the space you're in, your soul is saying, we've outgrown this. It's time to make some changes. And then you have to be aligned to do it. Put yourself first. Go back to nature. Ask for clarity and be willing to accept it as it comes into you. I hope you have a wonderful December. Make the best of it. Always choose higher vibrational, higher consciousness choices. Even if you're the only one, do it. Because it is honoring your energy. It is honoring your path and it is honoring your purpose. I hope you all have a wonderful month and a wonderful day.